I remember geometry class. It still enters my nightmares occasionally. Geometry, as my teacher said, is an important mathematical art that I really should pay more attention to. In selecting props, it seems geometry, not metallurgy, is more important than anyone will admit. I found the prop is often an afterthought, and when you do focus on it, you get barraged with information, schedules, lists, and choices with little real information to support the choice. I've determined the real crux of the story is your boat and the way you use it, how your boat is running, and how you want to run your boat. Geometry has everything to do with it and isn't really a black art after all. The propeller has to be matched to the boat, the motor, and the engine combined. Then you're still not done. You now consider how it runs and how you want it to run, then you can get down to the right prop for you and the boat. I can validate it's vital to know how you want to use your boat. Is it best fuel economy? Much more important as gas passes through 450 a gallon today. Is it planing speed? Is it top speed? How do you expect to run the boat? That is most important. And that may have changed from when you first bought the boat. Cold shot thrill may have been really cool, but now that gas is so expensive, you really don't want to throw the coals to her anymore. You most likely will not get the same prop to do both. Splash your boat where you normally run it and take along a notepad and pen as well as someone to write down the results. Load the boat like you usually run it. It really does make a difference with people in gear. Now you're the boat test captain. Do several hole shots, add up the times and divide the number of times studied. Next, make several runs from 0 to 30 miles per hour using reliable GPS. We use radar guns for best accuracy, but the GPS is just fine for this. Average this number as well. Then make a chart with RPM and speed. Add fuel if you have the meters on your boat. Chart every 500 RPMs from in gear at idle up to top speed. Repeat the process going in the opposite direction and average the two results. When you get back out of the water, write down the prop information for the prop you have, the engine information, and the make, model, and options on the boat. Towers can make a big difference. Be sure and be very detailed on the prop. For instance, not just a saltwater series 2. Write down the dimensions like 13.5 by 17 cup, 3 blade stainless steel with widgets, and so on. Note the condition. Any chips? Any damage to the skag on the engine? Is there a whale's tail or some other add-on device? Every bit of information can be a performance changing factor that makes the difference between you being happy with your boat and your being so frustrated that you're embarrassed to take your friends out fishing or skiing. Before we move on, remember, doing good research will be the difference in whether you get the performance you're looking to develop in the boat, motor, and propeller combination. Think about what the boat does that you like, what it does that you don't like, and what you would like to have it do that will make your day on the water more satisfying. If it has to do with performance, it could be as simple as a better choice of a more precision fit in propellers.